Millions of people across the U.S. suffer from it. 95% go undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. This gives you a bad feeling in your gut, doesn't it? We're talking about celiac disease. For years, little was known about celiac disease. It's a digestive and autoimmune disorder that is mainly triggered by consuming gluten. Gluten is found in wheat, barley, and rye, making one's diet the key to health. In fact, diet is the only current treatment of celiac disease. Luckily, awareness is on the rise and many grocery stores, restaurants, and bakeries are providing more options for those with this disease. Today, we'll be investigating further by digging into the lives of two people that have celiac disease. We met up with Ingrid Collins, a fourth year student at Bridgewater State University. She's a typical college student, except she has celiac disease. We asked if she would share a little bit about her experiences living with celiac disease as a college student with us. My symptoms with celiac disease, uh, often I experience fatigue, sometimes headaches and dizziness, the occasional diarrhea, usually vomiting for me though, and some joint pain. I was first diagnosed in high school. Um, my sophomore year, I got admitted to the hospital with some stomach pain and I was vomiting a lot and I couldn't control it. They ran a bunch of tests, but they didn't find anything conclusive. They said that my intestines and my stomach were just inflamed, which they associated to Crohn's disease. Um, I had a follow-up several months later, but within that time period, I decided to do my own research and cut out you know, uh, wheat, carbs, different um, things from my diet to see if it could help. I even started juicing for a little bit to see if that would help. And um, also within that time, my aunt got diagnosed with celiac disease, and a few months later, I got some blood work done, and they um, diagnosed me with celiac disease as well. I do have a family history of celiac disease on my father's side. I have two aunts and an uncle that have it, and I also have three cousins that have been diagnosed with it. Um, we all kind of went as a family to get the blood work and um, further biopsies to confirm that we had it. I also have my older sister and an aunt that both have thyroid disease as well, which is associated with celiac disease. Being in college with celiac disease definitely has its disadvantages in a way. Um, anytime I try to go to any deli-like place or if I go to the cafeteria, I have to be very careful because gluten is in a lot more things than I initially even realized. Sometimes even just trace amounts of gluten can bother me. Even though Ingrid does her best to stray from gluten products, she frequently gets sick and sometimes has to act quickly even if it's inconvenient. So, for example, if I'm at the salad bar at school and someone touched the tongs on a couple of croutons and then they put it back in the lettuce, I may have a reaction, and that's kind of difficult. Also, just living in the same space as other people and sharing a kitchen is difficult because of the trace contamination that can happen. Um, but my friends are pretty good about making sure that they keep the area clean and that they're careful around me because they know that it's not just, you know, me being on a diet or trying to lose weight. It's an actual allergy and it actually makes me sick. Um, I can't drink beer, which is the college social drink, so that's been a little bit of a rough patch that I've had to get through, but I've found ways to avoid it. For example, if I go to a bar, I just ask for, you know, a gluten-free beer or cider, or my go-to will be a wine drink that I can share with my friends. And um, there's actually a lot more restaurants now that offer gluten-free menus, while the menus are kind of bare in what they offer me, it's still nice that I can have that option to maintain, you know, a regular social life with my friends despite having this kind of disease where I have to be very careful about what I ingest. I've heard about a couple lipsticks, lotions, and shampoos that have gluten in them. I'm probably not as careful as I should be with things like that um, in regards to external, um, you know, exposures. Uh, however, if I do see that something's made with oatmeal or any kind of um, wheat extract, I try to avoid it. Um, I know that some people do have skin reactions to it. I'm fortunately not one of those people. Mine is just more of an internal reaction. However, there are some things that have hidden gluten in them. Um, examples are Sunny Delight, Twizzlers, almost all brand name cereals that have gluten in them. Anything with malt or um, a caramel coloring such as soy sauce has gluten in it and grated cheese even. 
So that's become, you know, something I have to be extremely aware of whenever I'm out with my friends or buying something at the grocery store. I have to really pay attention to labels and it's kind of tedious sometimes. Any advice that I would have to someone that's just being diagnosed with celiac disease, I would definitely say just be careful about what you purchase or ingest and just be aware of what's around you at all times. Know what happens to you when you're exposed to gluten and um, know ways to avoid it. Know how to read labels. And also just for friends and family or anyone that you might encounter out at a restaurant, just make sure that they know it's not you trying to lose weight and it's not you trying to be healthier. It's an actual allergy and you do have an actual reaction to it and it can make you sick. Most of the time people are pretty understanding though, so that's always a good thing. And there's a lot more, you know, it kind of, they're highlighting the disease a lot more in the media today. There's uh, tons of, you know, apps for your phone to help you find restaurants that can cater to your needs and um, things where you can scan the barcode at the grocery store to help you so you won't get exposed to anything that's going to make you sick. This is Dr. Wilhelm Smith, a prestigious gastroenterologist at the BU Medical Center in Boston. He's been studying celiac disease for the last 15 years. There are over 300 known symptoms that can be seen in celiac patients, such as bloating, gas, an itchy skin rash known as dermatitis herpetiformis, diarrhea, and weight loss. Some more serious symptoms range from depression to even osteoporosis. It is common for celiac parents to have children who also have the disease. In fact, first-degree relatives have a 1 in 22 chance of being a celiac. Children with celiac disease may be at risk for delayed puberty, constipation, and ADHD. If left untreated, celiac disease can cause long-term complications, such as type 1 diabetes, certain types of cancer, including intestinal cancer, internal hemorrhaging, pancreatic disease, tooth enamel defects, which is why I always carry a toothbrush. Complications can also arise with the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system if celiac disease is left untreated. Let us take a closer look at what celiac disease does to the body. So, a tasty sandwich such as this one contains the protein gluten, the bread as a main culprit. These are villi which are found in the small intestine. Villi absorb essential nutrients represented by the green droplets. In patients with celiac disease, gluten causes the immune system to attack and destroy villi, resulting in malabsorption. Malabsorption, of course, increases your risk for other diseases. In terms of being very close to a gluten sensitivity, celiac disease is very similar. You come into my clinic you have headache, you have depression, uh, tingling in your fingers, your fingertips. Uh, these could be symptoms from eating gluten. If you get your blood test back and you don't have celiac disease, then I would say you have a gluten sensitivity. Even though we have been eating wheat for thousands of years, gluten is a weird protein. We are not meant to eat gluten. We don't have the enzymes to dismantle the protein. Gluten is an invader in our bodies. We build up antibodies to attack the gluten, and it just ends up attacking our own bodies. This we do not want. As far as those without the celiac disease, gluten is okay in the diet. Uh, people who have a gluten sensitivity should definitely stray away from it. Celiacs obviously need to stay away from it. But if you are a normal person, you have been tested negatively, uh, gluten is fine. A lot of foods with gluten do have a lot of calories, a lot of carbs. People don't want those. They make you fat. But they're okay. I really hope that I can help celiac patients one day eat gluten. As right now, the only cure is a gluten-free diet, which is very hard to follow. Through my research, I hope to one day find a, perhaps a pill that will help
people with gluten sensitivity and celiac disease uh, eat eat gluten. Um, I believe it would be very popular um, and I have a lot more work to do but uh, I believe I can do it. Thank you for your insight Dr. Smith and a very special thank you to Ingrid for sharing her story. Ingrid has been doing well and she's now advocating for celiac disease awareness. Well, Dr. Smith is writing his new book entitled, I Can't Eat Wheat. If you think you have any of the symptoms for celiac disease, be sure to consult your doctor and get tested right away. Don't let celiac disease control your life. I eat vegetables.